Hi, this is David Brower. I am very happy to welcome you today to the Make Living Pleasurable show. I have a beautiful guest with us today. You know, the show is about how do we integrate pleasure more into our everyday lives? How can we actually find it in the way that we live our lives, grow ourselves and relate with others and achieve uh, the success that is that is ours, the way that we want to in life with more pleasure? So today's guest, uh, I'm very happy to welcome is Julie Tara. A vitality expert, uh, a dear friend who's based in Boulder, Colorado, of all places. I'm kind of jealous, even though I'm in Paris. <laughs> and today we're actually going to talk about the pleasures of our true nature inside and out. But before, I just want to tell you just a little bit about Julie, a magnificently accomplished um, extreme vitality expert. <laughs> you make me feel kind of energy list when I'm with you. <laughs> I'm like, I got some work to do. <laughs> so uh, Julie is, uh, you know, an awesome uh, um, resource for inspiration and health and wealth for um, humans all around the planet. Um, she's passionate about poetry and nature, uh, music and, and movement. Um, you know, she's very deeply uh, experienced and um, lives with a very uh, a beautiful spiritualness and helps others with their spiritual awakening. Um, she is a celebration of life, uh, that is for sure. Uh, and she really supports people to live their dreams and to dare to to live the life that they want to, to live. She was a, a former uh, world-class ballet dancer for uh, the, was it the Royal Ballet in London, Julie? Yeah. Royal Ballet and then Dutch National Ballet in Holland. And the Dutch National Ballet in Holland, very good. Um, and yeah, she has three kids. And as I mentioned before, she lives in Boulder, which is obviously a very good place to live a, a life full of nature, uh, abundance, creativity, um, energy and vitality, which we're gonna get a piece of uh, today, which will be quite uh, quite beautiful. So, welcome to the show, Julie. Thank you so much, David. <laughs> I've been really looking forward to doing this with you. I'm excited. Very happy to have you here to talk about the pleasures of our true nature, inside and out. And yeah, first of all, I just wanted to ask you, you know, what is the relationship for you between vitality and pleasure, and pleasure and vitality? Hmm. Wow. Well, they're so interconnected to me because I, I think the more vital we feel and the more we um, cultivate our, our light body, our radiance, the more we can experience pleasure and we don't get so caught up in the, um, you know, see this morning about the pain body, you know, and Eckhart Tolle is the pain body when we're stuck in the past or we're worried about the future. And you can see it kind of happen with people where it, it will be like a dark cast that comes yeah. over us when we go into those places. So if we're consistently focused on staying in the present and letting go of the past and trusting the future without fretting about it, we are, we are more able to experience true pleasure, which is available to us in any given moment. I feel that intimacy with all that mm. is, is available and that's great pleasure. Mm, beautiful. And so what, uh, what do you do to achieve that? <laughs> to cultivate it. There's lots of things that I do. Every and I think, <laughs> um, I think a lot of it is um, kind of a daily practices like incremental mm. gains, you know, versus mm. just kind of a seesaw of, oh, I'm going to go experience pleasure. Uh, being in the moment in Hawaii for a week, and then I'm going to come back to my to my dastardly life or whatever, you know, is this more like this is like incremental gains on a daily level. Mm. What are the things that really support us in yeah. in pleasure? So um, I'm, I'll give you an example. Like this morning, it's gorgeous here, right? I mean, I moved here to start a healing center because it's just so vibrant in Colorado and there's so much wild life and wild nature and uh, it's hard to not stay connected to one's own wildness when you're in that so this morning you know i got up super early and i went outside and it's you know it's the early autumn here so late summer early autumn very special time 
the sunlight changes. It, it gets really golden. It has a different cast because of the rays and, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know the physics of it. And I was watching the trees as I went for a walk outside in the back area here where I have open space, which means basically just fields and trees and uh, bike paths. And I was just walking and noticing the light and the trees and the color changes and the little bit of gold that's starting to appear now. And that brisk feeling in the air, that little crispy feeling, you know, and the sunlight. And I was just staying present and mm -hmm. noticing. And the thrill of that, the thrill of nature itself and our connection, you know, is, is so critical. So like the very first thing is I'll go and stand barefoot on the grass and really get grounded, mm -hmm. you know, because that that ionic exchange is hugely important for us, you know, to stay connected. So a big part of the, what I teach is about staying connected to nature and how do we do that, both with going out into nature and also bringing nature into the home in different mm. ways to stay connected to the Earth's energy field, magnetics, magnetism, the sun, you know, and the light of the sun. It's terribly important for us. So if we're inside all the time, we're not getting it because our windows mm. are, you know, they're covered in that certain stuff to stop a lot of the rays of light. Well, light informs us. It, it's, it gives us actual information to every cell of the body. Mm -hmm. We must get it. So we can't be always outside with sunglasses on, even though I do wear sunglasses. I'm very sensitive to sun, but the early morning sun, it's mm -hmm. perfect. So to let it bathe us inside and out, mm -hmm. let it get on our skin as much as possible, you know, because it's going to come in and inform not just vitamin D and things like that, but literal information, mm -hmm. which I believe is spiritual information comes flowing in. And the same with the air and breathing the air and taking deep breaths. And before I even get to yoga or anything else, these are simple things we can do to, you know, obviously water, right? Drinking good quality water. So we're getting the elements into us all the time because we're so separate from nature right now. And it's very debilitating to our energy field. Mm -hmm. It just makes us tired. Computers. Mm -hmm emanate positive ions that exhausts us even though it's po the word positive it's not it's bad for us so i have a grounding mat under my computer to keep me connected to the negative ion exchange which is very healthy yeah. so there's lots of things we can do but first and foremost is to make sure we're getting outside because we do forget that not only do we need the connection with nature but we are nature we actually, our nature is nature. So when we lose ourselves in, and you know, life can be challenging and certainly I've had a million challenges myself is when we get lost in the challenge and we get like, wow, what's happening? And I, I don't know my way and who am I anyway? The fastest way to get connected again is, is go back into nature, sit by a river, watch the water flow and remember with the sparkling light, like I am that, mm. that water flows through me, I am mm. that. And so that sense of unity, which nature gives us, that makes us feel so happy is a remembrance mm. of, of who we actually are. So yeah. I, that, that's just one area that I am very committed to is helping remind people about that and making sure that we, you know, get out, make sure I get out into nature and then I can come back in and then I did this high intensity workout today which was like exhausting and but fun and it's all these you know squats <laughs> and push-ups and I'm like oh you know I just had a birthday and I was like I think I need to get a little more fit so <laughs> yeah. I'm not enjoying it but I am enjoying it because yeah. it's, it's connecting me to my body and yeah. that's super important for pleasure too mm -hmm. you know the pleasure of having a body I yeah. think is a wonderful, wonderful gift yeah. on the planet. You know, we get to incarnate. How cool is that? Yeah. No, there's so much there. It's so beautiful. So are you doing tree hugging when you're out there in your neighborhood? I do. I do. <laughs> and I have my favorite trees. And I tell all the trees how much I love them and, and the earth and how much I love it. And the ducks and the geese and the 
everything. Uh, but yeah, there's um, a couple of trees that I especially love. You know, they're sort of like to me, yeah. sort of a king and a queen of the trees. And uh, beautiful, I yeah. talk to them and hug them and sit and cuddle them, you know, cuddle into them. Yeah. So that. what about us urbanites who, you know, here I have my Kenzo fake flowers. These were actually, gosh, 15 years ago, one day, Kenzo, the Japanese um, couturier, uh, planted on the sidewalk tens of thousands of these flowers one day. So we all went out, walked around the streets, and there were all these flowers over the place, and everyone picked them up to take them home. So I picked oh. up quite a few. Uh, so, Beautiful. but that isn't real. So, you know, there are some gardens in Paris. Paris is not the greenest uh, per square, you know, kilometer a mile cities uh, uh, there is. There's not a lot of trees. There are, but not a lot. Uh, there's not a lot of lawns or things like this. So w what do you suggest in, I mean, I can get to a garden probably not too far away, but for, for people who don't have uh, access to uh, nature to experience what you were just talking about? Yes. Uh, I think it's a great question because many, many people don't. And of course, I lived many years in London and mm. and, and Amsterdam and Actually, I think in Amsterdam particularly, which I loved living there, I, I learned about plants and bringing plants into the home. So I have a lot of plants in my home. Like there's even, a bunch even of with all that you have outside of your home, you have all the plants yeah. inside. <laughs> yeah, many, because <clears throat> they remind you of, of uh, life. They're green. Mm. The colors are really yeah. powerful. But, of course, also... Um, you know, the whole exchange with mm. oxygen is really important because yeah. um, I think inside we lose contact with like really healthy air. So, I mean, I have air filtration systems in every room mm -hmm. that pr not only take out all the things you don't want, you yeah. know, molds and dust and everything, but they bring back negative ions, which makes us happy and make, and make us feel calm. And, yeah. you know, scented and serene. But I think plants, <clears throat> I mean, I have a whole bunch over here on this side. I don't know if you can see. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so, like, there's a bunch over there. There's a bunch upstairs. I have a huge uh, royal palm up in my bedroom. It's obviously massive. It takes over the whole room. But I love it. And, um, you know, and I, I tell them how much I love them. And... I know that they hear me, and then I have flowers as well. Like I have orchids over there, and mm -hmm. uh, over you know quite a lot. These ones behind me aren't blooming right this moment, but they keep reblooming. This reminds me of the life death life cycle, because orchids, like the one back there, looks dead. They look dead, you know, when they're not <laughs> blooming, right? But but then suddenly out of nowhere they'll start blooming again, just like a tree in the spring. Suddenly it's bringing its leaves back. So it's, it's a constant reminder of this, you know, life, death, life cycle, which we will all go through uh, mm -hmm. in our lives. You know, maybe we had a super mm -hmm. challenging childhood. I, I know I did. Uh, but maybe not. Maybe it was a super childhood. And then we have a mm -hmm. really challenging teenage years or whatever. We're going to have these cycles. We're going to, you know, do great things and lose things. We're going to love people and we're going to lose people. It's it going to mm -hmm. happen because it is a life, death, life cycle. And so these things remind me, like the big orchid over there in the background over there is is still blooming beautifully, but it's starting to dry and I can see it's going to happen. You know, it's going to lose all those beautiful flowers. So I, I think um, the constant reminder is is a critical thing. And if, if you live like in a high rise or something, or you're not living on the <laughs> ground floor, and even if you are, you've still got cement and walls filled with electricity and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really important to bring the magnetic field of the earth in. So that's not going to be enough with just plants. So like I sit on a seat with, you know, magnetics in mm -hmm. it. So it's, it's helping me. It's different from the grounding map, but it's giving me that magnetic field that we cannot live without. Yeah. I also turn the Wi-Fi off at night to make mm. sure that it's not on when I'm sleeping and I sleep in a magnetic cocoon of earth energy and sun mm -hmm. energy. So it's a frequency called far infrared. And that mm -hmm. is really important for rebuilding the light body, which informs the physical body, of course, and negative ion technology. So I sleep in that cocoon, but I always turn that Wi-Fi off 
And in the morning, I don't turn it on until I'm going to use it, mm-hmm. which could be quite quickly or it could be, you know, you, uh, you know, uh, like an hour or so later after I've done my workout or gone out mm-hmm. for a walk. And why does the Wi-Fi need to be on? It doesn't. So these are things because we've forgotten. We're so used to using these things that we've forgotten that the Wi-Fi frequency is completely antithetical to our frequencies. We do mm-hmm. not thrive on it. We enjoy it. We're using it right now and it's fantastic. But we have to stay connected to the frequencies that our human body is designed to thrive in. This is yeah. very, very, very important. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, and it's just a natural part of, you know, like this is magnetic necklace that I wear all the time, or maybe I wear mm-hmm. the sports one, you know, and so I just use things. And then there's, of course, food, you know, which you love, you know, there's like, and I do too, you know, organic foods. I, I started eating organic foods when I was 23, actually a bit younger, because I was still at Dutch National Ballet, but I started studying macrobiotics, mm-hmm. which had a focus on food and organics when I was 23. Well, in England in 1923, uh, well, when I was 23, sorry, not 1923, uh, it was like 1979, 1980, somewhere in there. I mean, people were just like, why would you eat organic foods? Why would you pay more <laughs> for a little apple than pay yeah. less for the big apple? Because it doesn't have toxins in it, it doesn't have pesticides, it doesn't have, and it's my body. And yeah. so these are like daily practices. So I learned a lot then and I never went back. I always, to, to the best of my ability, eat organic foods, mm-hmm. you know, so that that simple change, you know, just, mm-hmm. you know, my headaches went away and, 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 and also shifting what I ate, you yeah. know, being mindful about a plant-based diet, um, you know, which people say, oh, you don't get enough protein. But you actually do. I mean, uh, you know, you know, I just turned 65 the other day. And honestly, I haven't seen a doctor since, I mean, I mean, a couple of little things, <laughs> but nothing really since I birthed my children in my 20s. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and that was like, I think that's a world record. (laughs) Raise your hand if you haven't seen a doctor in 10, 20, 30, 40 years. (laughs) Good luck. 40 years or so. Yeah. I was 25 when I had my first child. That's extraordinary. That is extraordinary. That is vitality. Yeah. Right. And you just, and you, and you, and you get a check up. I I get a check up Mm -hmm. once a year and that's great, you know, and, yeah. But, and it's not that I wouldn't use them. And if I broke my arm, I didn't need to be there. It's not um, that I'm, I mean, I'm much more interested in natural health and healing than I am in allopathic medicine. That is true. Yeah. That is true. But if I need allopathic medicine, I have no problem going to get it. So let's, let's take this back a little bit to your noticing when you got in the morning. Because one thing that I find really fascinating is our ability to Um, get over hedonic adaptation and this sort of sense of jadedness and kind of, you know, quick boredom either because we're, we're needing like a dopamine hit or some kind of a stimulation or distraction uh, or ego wants something else or whatever's kind of going on that we have a challenge to actually stay present uh, in maybe a nature that we've gone out to every morning for the whole year. And even though there's changing season ever, there's a little bit of like a, perhaps a treadmill feeling to a routine or a a practice or a ritual. And I'm curious, uh, your thoughts on how, how can people, uh, take routine types of activities like this and bring more pleasure into them so that they are re-engaged and there's some kind of novelness about it or some kind of, um, difference or uh, something that just kind of shakes it up so they don't sort of get bored. Because again, I'm kind of coming back to, you know, the, if, if you're really getting pleasure out of it, and you're really present to that pleasure and you're really valuing that pleasure in that moment, then you're, you're actually going to want to go back and you're actually going to want to find new things and you're actually going to want to. So I'm just curious, you know, if I think for even for myself and clearly you know, I have huge admiration for for you and including, I can only imagine the discipline it takes and the repetitiveness and the incremental gains you were talking about 
to be a dancer at the level that you were to stay flexible and strong and like I mean, I imagine you were stretching, working out like six or eight or 10 hours a day, you know, just to kind of keep yourself prime. It's like, how, how do we not get bored with such routine and discipline and, um, you know, these kind of daily things that serve our, our vitality? It's a really interesting question, boredom. You know, what, what is boredom and why would we get bored? And I think part of it is when we start losing our innate gratitude, you know, for, mm. for life. Because when we're grateful that we actually have a body that we get to play in and with, mm. you know, we just have to take that for granted and, oh, my back's a little achy today or, you know, and we start to grumble and then we get kind of bored of, of the routine, as you say. And to me, it's just uh, more about, Change it up if you need, because sometimes you do. Like I do Pilates three times a week, but on a reformer, I go to a class. I didn't last year, so I did. Brutal. Do it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. I, love I it bet it's you do. <laughs> I <laughs> bet <laughs> you do. <laughs> right? And, but then, you know, so, you know, so last year I was doing yoga every day here at home yeah. because I couldn't, you know, everything was closed up. But then I got back to the Pilates, which I've been doing for about 26 years now, you know, three times a week. I just, I like it. It makes me feel good. Amazing. But then on the other days, I was like, I need something different. I was walking and I was like, it's not, it's not enough. I, you know, mm. my metabolism, it's getting slow. And so I started looking up online, like, okay, what kind of a metabolic reset can I do? And now I'm doing these high intensity, you know, it's just 15 minutes of high intensity three times a week. So, so what, what, the, what are you doing? What are the actual exercises? Just, uh, yeah. Is it so machines or is it you're doing it? No, no machine. Just right here on my oh, yoga great. mat. It's a lot of like squats, using weights, push-ups, um, you know, arm curls, um, jumping, um, burpees, um, burpees yeah. lie down, jump up, lie down, jump uh -huh. up. Because these motions, uh, like one of the things the trainer said, he was like, you know, nobody really likes squats. And I was like, yeah, I don't really like squats either. He said, but you're going to be squatting all your life. Somehow, some way you're going to squat to go to the toilet. You're going to squat yeah. again. <laughs> you don't want to lose those muscles, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's so true, right? And the more I'm doing it, I've already done it for three weeks. It's like, I'm changing it up and I, I go yeah. in with a bit of resistance, right? And then I find the joy in it. And I'm exhausted at the end and puffing, and it's supposed to be that way. And and I'm finding that already my body's changing. Just already in three weeks, I'm like, oh yeah, I can start to feel the tone back stronger, or you know, the muscles. And fifteen minutes only. It's fifteen minutes, yeah, but it's it's fifteen minutes like nonstop. Well, I mean, you rest if you need. <clears throat> He's like, you go as far as you can, and then you rest a bit, and then you do it again. Mm -hmm. You know. So I think probably ballet gave me this discipline. I mean, most people don't become ballet dancers unless they love being in the body and they want to bring the light of spirit here, mm. <clears throat> right? Mm. And that's my real joy is helping people to raise their vibration yeah. so that all of the brightness of who they are as a spiritual being can be actually here represented through the physical form, through yeah. our mind, through our emotions and all of that. Um, <clears throat> and so I think with... Ballet dancers, that's what we actually deep down want to do. It's the joy of music and mm. the body wants to move. And I'm like, I'm here. I get to move in this life. So here we go. And and I did start at three years old. And I left home at 10 years old to go wow. study professionally at the Royal wow. Ballet. Incredible. Right? So I was living in a, in a you know, house, you know, mm. the White, White Lodge in Richmond Park from 10 years old to 15 boarding school, dancing mm. every day. And in the holidays... Uh, when uh, you know everybody else would just take time off, I would I would rent the church hall, take down my little boombox, play music, and I would dance because I knew that <laughs> I needed to stay fit, or yeah. else I'd go back and I'd have regressed. Yeah. So this is about moving forward. It's not just the body, but it is a delight in being. It's the pleasure of being in the body, mm -hmm. and with the boredom piece, I think when I bored is because I'm not really present. When mm. I'm bored, I'm checked out. Mm. Fascinating. I'm checked out. Fascinating. I'm probably in the past thinking about something that didn't work out or, mm. you know, the long lost love that I always wanted that didn't happen. Or, you know, I'm somewhere there 
and I'm not really here. Uh huh. Or I'm somewhere in the future going, oh, my gosh, what's going to happen in, you know, five years and blah, 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 worrying about that. Mm. And then it, it shows up as a malaise, mm -hmm. as a malaise, it, you know, because I'm I'm not really vital and vibrant here and now. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's a it's a living meditation that you're experiencing when you're out in the world. So like a meditation our eyes are closed and we're trying not to do exactly what you say to attach to the past or, uh, or the future and have a certain equanimity and detachment. And then when we go out into the world, actually living in the same way, so as not to be um, distracted so we can be fully present. And I feel like that around food, that using through our senses, which is kind of my trigger to come back to the senses. You know, it's like in Vipassana, um, silent retreat meditation, you know, it's like follow the sensations, right? And start again when you get off track and start again, you get off track. And I think that's that mechanism of practicing that as we're out brings us more into present. And then once we're present, I experience, you know, constantly reminding myself, use your five senses and like appreciate the trees that are around you that you're, you know, Appreciate the sun rays coming through the thing. Smell the pine odors, you know, feel this, the, the, the air on your skin, et cetera. And it's kind of true when you're not really present. You know, your brain doesn't seem to be able to do both at the same time, right? So it's almost not even like you're partially present. It's like you're either kind of almost like entirely not or you kind of entirely are. And I, I totally get what you're saying. Like you get... Like you get bored because you're just not there in the experience. <laughs> so how can it be interesting for you? You know, it's like where your interest goes is where it gets interesting. And so I guess we get a little bit like when it gets subconscious, maybe we get so used to going out in the morning or something that it liberates a bit of our brain. We have to almost consciously bring ourselves back to say, wait a minute, gratitude. Where am I? What am I experiencing? You know? Yes. Yes. I, a couple of days ago, I went into Whole Foods, which is not a shop I usually go into <laughs> just because they were like Pac-Man and took up all the little, little natural grocers. But I happened to be there <laughs> and I saw this card and I thought, I'm going to bring it home and just put it by my computer just on, for a daily reminder. It just says gratitude. Oh, uh, yeah. And it was wow. such a beautiful card. And I thought, oh, the colors are so lovely. And I was just standing in line waiting to check out, you know, and I thought that. That is super, and I'm taking notice, and I'm going to get it, and I'm going to just put it here so that every day when I go into a mode of, oh, it's not fair, or he did this, or she said that, or, you know, whatever it is, I can look at that and go, but I'm grateful, and I'm grateful, and I'm grateful. Um, yeah. You know, I watched... Uh, you know, Shadowlands the other night, which is a story of C.S. Lewis and his falling in love with this woman, Joy. And he'd never fallen in love before because he'd lost his mother as a very young child. And so he decided to close his heart, you know, and then he and then he falls in love if he can't help himself, you know, and it's that whole story. And I was just bawling my eyes out. And I was like, I don't even know why I'm crying so much. I loved the Lion, the Witch in the Wardrobe series, you know, the Narnia series as a kid, I was like yeah. eating it up, you know? And I thought, but it's really the story about his heart. And, and, and there's a beautiful piece where, you know, we got to kind of give it up and love fully. And it means mm. when we lose, we will suffer greatly. But if we don't love fully, or if we try to, you know, say, I'm never going to do that again, I'm going to hold back. We'll, we'll never get to experience the fullness of life and the pleasure of life, right? Yeah. Because it's, it, and we all do this. I mean, I mean, mm. the whole thing is it's sort of the closing of the heart and forgetting who we really are and then the opening up again like a flower, you know, and it closes at night and it opens. Mm -hmm. But you see a lot of people that are just closed down and, and, and then, yes, they get bored and nothing satisfies them because now it's, the quest for material things, the 10,000 things or something. But is that really going to bring us happiness? Mm -hmm. Real pleasure? In a moment, for a moment it does. I mean, I love clothes. And I will say I love soft cashmere and silk. And I love to touch it. And I love the colors. And 
I love to buy it and I love to have it, you know, but ultimately does it make me happy? It's enjoyable for sure, but it's nothing like having an amazing conversation with a gorgeous friend and feeling that connection and that intimacy and, yeah. and all of that, right? It, it'll never give me that. And, and I know that, and I still might enjoy doing it. And I understand mm. what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the color. I'm looking for the feel. I'm mm. looking for the, for the putting it on and going, wow, that cashmere just feels like unbelievably amazing on my body, you know? Um, but I could spend all my money on that and it would never give me, I just have a, you know, too many closets full of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, good segue. So what's this thing about you being a circus performer in the largest, most successful circus in Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> what is that that's a, about? That's a funny segue. That's a funny segue. <laughs> oh, well. I was in London and I was, uh, I was going to Pineapple Dance Studios to dance and take a class. And I passed a travel agency and it was pouring with rain. London usually does. Paris, I'm sure a lot as well. Same kind of latitude. And... And uh, I thought I'd love to go to Mexico. There's a big picture of Mexico. I'd love to go to Mexico, but you know, I don't have any money. I think it was 23, maybe 24 or something like that. 23, I think. And, and uh, I went and did my class and this lady came over after the class she'd been watching and I saw her through the window. I didn't think anything of it. And she came up right after and said, how would you like to go to Mexico? And I said, what? Because I just had the thought. I just had the thought before the class, I'd love to go to Mexico, how fun that would be. And she said, I'm, I'm recruiting for a circus, we're looking for the best dancers, you're the best. And uh, we're recruiting from Australia and England and, you know, uh, I'm like, well, what would I do? And she said, you know, you'll be dance, doing dances from around the world, one of which was the Can Can, uh, which is a really <laughs> fun uh, super fun though. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I said, well, when do I have to go? And she said, well, you have a couple of weeks, I think it was, to decide. And the funny thing was I was, uh, the London Film um, Institute is right opposite Pineapple Dance Studios in London and I was up for a film. I thought I'd just have fun trying my hand at acting just because I'd never done it. And uh, I was up for the lead and it was between me and another girl. So I had to decide, am I going to go with the film idea and the lead and the thing, or am I gonna go with the circus? And I just thought, it just sounds too much fun. I, I think I have to go to the circus. <laughs> So off I went. Off Follow I went. the pleasure. <laughs> Follow the pleasure. And, I and my one suitcase of clothes, speaking of clothes, they lost it or it didn't catch up with me. <laughs> and it didn't catch up with me for weeks. <laughs> so we kept moving. And then yeah. the suitcase kept following, but it was always after we left. And yeah. so I, it was interesting to experience living in Mexico in a new job with the circus and no clothes. I mean, nothing yeah. other than what I had you know, on me. <laughs> and so I had to borrow things, go buy things, you yeah, know, so you got very well good... paid in the circus. And, uh, I made friends with the six tigers and I loved the tigers. <laughs> wow. And that, they were beautiful. And, um, I used to go early in the morning and I'd mm -hmm. talk to the tigers and then I'd watch the guys put up the tent, which is mm -hmm. the most wonderful experience of seeing teamwork. Is uh, when yeah. they put up a tent because it's all coordinated and timed with the wow, yeah. as they hit the stakes down and it's a big tent with a thrust stage. We didn't yeah. have a pit; we had a thrust stage. It was owned by a multimillionaire guy called Franco who had two little silver pistols on his uh, belt all the time. All the time. <laughs> never went anywhere without his pistol. Yeah, and yeah, and then I ran away from the circus after. A few months of it, I heard he was taking our passports away, and I didn't like that idea. Whoa. To be in without my passport. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Like, yeah, yeah so a, I ran away early. Incredible. In incredible. That's wild. <laughs> it was Run super wild. Ran away from the circus, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I almost didn't get through the uh, the whole um, immigration thing back into America because I didn't think it through with papers, right? I was 23 and not quite all there with all the implications and I had and the guy was like you can't go through to America and I it was like early in the morning right Tijuana and I said well I'm just going through for the day and we had just been in Tijuana and we were very famous so I I looked at him and I said did you go to the circus Cirque d'Italia we were just in Tijuana he said yes I did I said do you remember the girl in the green sequin bikini who got cut up in pieces and he said yes I do and I said well that's me <laughs> 
it is you. And I said, yes, I'm just going through for the day. I'll be right back. And I'm a really bad liar, but I did lie. I said, I'll be right back. I just want to go get a book, you know, and a couple yeah. of American things, toothpaste, something silly. And and he let me do, let me through. Extraordinary. And I almost so fainted on the other side. I was like, I, I was like, all right. Because, you know, being in a Mexican prison is not what you want to do. No, that's not. Yeah, I've been to Tijuana and, and no. not been no. in a prison, but I get exactly what you mean, especially back in the in the day. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, that's so great. Well, you know, I wanted to give you an opportunity to share with uh, everyone listening, um, you know, where can we find you and what types of things are you um, supporting people with these days? Uh, is there anything coming out you want to share about? Just take a couple of a couple of few minutes to share that. Sure. Um, well, just to say one thing, one one of the the, the internal nature pieces is, is a lot. I do a lot of dr dream work, so I've studied mm. dreams a lot. I I'm a, always been a big dreamer, and I think our dream mm. life is as important that inner nature as our out going out into nature. Mm. And so um, I do love helping people with with dreams and. I find that dreams are very informative from the soul, you know, really our soul journey, our hero's mm. journey through life. Dreams inform yeah. us uh, a lot about that. And so uh, to just say that, but I also, you know, I write poetry. I have a poetry book, Songs of Gaia, um, as you know, which is, mm -hmm. you know, divided into sort of spirit, nature, and, mm. and lo love is the theme throughout. Mm. Um, but mostly I've been doing new poetic pieces with music um, and, and visuals, which are called Poetic Elixirs. So you can find me on YouTube, um, Julie Tara. I have a lot of um, teachings about natural health as well there, mm -hmm. um, but the poetry is also there. Um, I have a podcast, Adventures of the Awakened Heart, where I've been loving interviewing people about their own journeys of awakening. You know, what is when things were really hard and then the shifts and, and mm -hmm. that that moment of re remembrance that we're all connected and we're all one. Mm. And there really is no such thing as death. Actually, it's a life death life cycle on this plane, but we are all one in, in eternity. So there's that. And then I have another podcast I do uh, called the radiant wisdom of the mystics and they're all on Spotify or, you know, I do them through anchor, but they're available on Spotify and Apple, uh, you know, podcast and all of that. And where else I have Julie, tara.com which is my website and i i feed a lot of things into that so i've been mm -hmm. writing quite a few blogs lately on medium and so i feed those in also through the website um <clears throat> where else facebook obviously julie tara tara transformations i love doing coaching work with people and I, you know, I've always loved helping people with their health, you know, primarily mm -hmm. just because my mom was so sick when I was a child and, and became a, an addict of pharmaceutical drugs, you know, mm -hmm. cocaine, uh, excuse me, not cocaine, heroin derivatives. And so mm -hmm. I, I saw all that as a child. And so I am very passionate about helping people stay healthy without mm -hmm. Oxycontin for pain or something like mm -hmm. that, you know. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I think those are the sort of main places. Telegram, I'm on, I have a couple of channels. I think we have um, enough to find you. <laughs> we will put, we will put a bunch of stuff in the show notes and things. So we, we LinkedIn, can easily. You know, I joined that link, oh, not LinkedIn, but Linktree. A tree link. said, you need Linktree yeah. because you can have all the links there. And actually that helped me a lot. Yeah, so that's I really can, good. You, know, you just put the Linktree and then it takes you to all those other things. Yeah. If you want to find but uh, I really <laughs> like having fun and I really like celebrating with yeah. people and helping people mm. to find the celebration within them, the pleasure, mm, you know, and, yeah. and, and of course it means sometimes working through the dark shadow because we mm. all have that. So the, we all have a pain body. We all have the shadow, but working through that to come back to one's own innate nature, one's own innate truth, one's own innate pleasure of being. Mm. Yeah, I, I I find that juicy, juicy stuff. And I, I think if we were all there radiating there as much as we can and being authentic and being real and crying our eyes out when we need to and yelling when we have to, hopefully not to anybody, but maybe, you know, out into the earth or something. Mm -hmm. Those are all very real emotions. But 
but I feel like if we could raise the vibration individually, we will raise the vibration collectively. And as we mm. do that, we raise the entire vibration on the planet. Yeah. And that's really what I'm up to is let's collectively raise the vibration mm. on the planet. Yeah. Uh, but we have to do it individually. We have to cultivate mm. our rainbow light body. And this is what yeah. all the ancient, you know, Buddha, Christ, all the mm. ancient, you know, amazing mystics and teachers did. They were cultivating it. Forgiveness, gratitude, mm -hmm. you know, letting things go. Move, I listened to Ram Das this morning on Gaia. You know, I listened to the Ram Das teachings and it was so beautiful what he said mm -hmm. about that we're all one and we're all individualized and to really appreciate both. That it's not, you can't just go into the oneness and live all there. You yeah. can't just be in the individuation stage and just mm -hmm. be like, well, I'm Julian, I'm separate from my friend David. It's, it's and. It's, mm. it's, it's both and. You're David, I'm Julie, and we're both part of the oneness. We're both part of the light. We're both yeah. part of the love. Mm. And that connecting those and, and living, like tossing between the two places of oneness and individuation, that's a cool thing. I, I think that's exciting. And that will bring us great pleasure, I believe. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> well, that was quite uh, quite a share there. So I, I think I'm not going to really say too much more because that was really beautiful. Just to thank you for spending this time uh, here with me and with everyone who will be experiencing this. Uh, I hope everyone will share this with whoever they would like to have an experience of this um, pleasures of our true nature inside and out. Uh, and maybe you just want to take the last word, Julie, and just give us kind of a last um, integration or fusion of, you know, pleasure within vitality. Um, you know, just give us a couple beautiful poetic ending lines, and then we'll call it a, a day. Snip. My, my real depth of thought here is <clears throat> actually just to say thank you to you because when you came to Boulder and did your sensorial weekend mm. with us in my home with all the beautiful guests that we all gathered together, mm. I will never, ever forget that weekend. <laughs> that weekend, it makes me want to cry. It was one of the most mm. beautiful, sincere, loving I mean, everything you did, the food, the wines, the poetry we had, the mm. dancing we did, the, you know, love for each other and your mm. love. I, I was, I was transfixed. I was transfixed and I have never forgotten that weekend. Mm. It is one of the most memorable weekends of my life. And I just have to say that. Thank you mm. so much mm. for You're that. Welcome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> You're a real gift to us. You really mm. are. Mm. And that's how we became friends. It really was through that. I was like, this man yeah. is amazing. I want to know him forever. <laughs> you are. Mm, thank you, you really are. Mm. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, everybody, we'll leave on this beautiful, beautiful note. Uh, and yes, yeah, stay tuned for the next Making Make Living Pleasurable show. Uh, every week we'll have a new episode with someone extraordinary and beautiful and soulful and vital like Julie Tara. So we'll see you around. Thanks. Much love, everyone. Know you are loved. <laughs>